its uh, welcoming words. And um, yeah, first of all, um, welcome from my side to everyone in the room. Um, yeah, we will talk a little bit about the agenda of our study trip after this short lecture that we are having. Um, and yeah, welcome everyone uh, joining online. Um, I hope you yeah, enjoy uh, what we have brought. Um, for you in the room, this short lecture is very, very, very important because it sets very much the stage for what you're gonna do um, yeah, in your assignment here during our study trip. And I can say already, although I like the last slide so much about the dwarfs in the city, it is not about, unfortunately, not about counting or making selfies with the dwarfs, but uh, anyhow, I think I can recommend it. And I saw this uh, very much whenever I'm in Wroclaw, I see families running around and taking uh, selfies with as many dwarfs uh, as, uh, as possible. So how many? 600, you said, right? So maybe, maybe we have an internal record also for the most selfies with dwarfs because you see them everywhere in the city. Um, so that being said, so this lecture is uh, is highly important for, um, for for the assignment and for everyone joining online. Um, I hope you learn something. You take something out, um, something interesting, something that you might find useful because it is about entrepreneurial ecosystems. And do we have a clicker? Some presenter? Whoop! Would be great. Yes. So it is about entrepreneurial ecosystems. And that's something very important. Anita um, talked about uh, my background uh, already a little bit. Thank you. Um, and um, yeah, entrepreneurial ecosystems is something uh, that is also um, highly relevant for me as a professor, as a researcher, and also for um, what we do in practice. Uh, Anita also introduced um, our university, HHL Leipzig Graduate School of Management. And we are, and consider ourselves, a very, very important driver of an entrepreneurial ecosystem. And my role as an academic director of digital space is yeah, to, to complement this ecosystem um, with an incubation program dedicated uh, to digital business models. Um, and today in this lecture, I want to talk about what really entrepreneurial ecosystems are, how they are composed, and um, also going, uh, as you're all master students uh, at a university, we go a little bit into theory and look a little bit into what research says about entrepreneurial ecosystems. So, uh, let's get started. As I said, we will talk about our agenda in, uh, um, uh, after this uh, session. Um, but let's get into this. Um, so, entrepreneurial ecosystems. Um, couple of things, three main aspects I want to talk about. First, I would really like to get everyone on the same page to understand, hey, what is the background and what actually is an entrepreneurial ecosystem? Then we're going to talk about um, some clear framework that is nice to apply. So everyone in the room knows that I'm a framework guy and I like structures. And I brought you a fantastic MISI structure, the eight pillars of entrepreneurial ecosystems, which will be highly relevant for, for your group work here. Uh, during the stay. Um, and then we're going to talk a little bit about entrepreneurial ecosystems around the world because entrepreneurial ecosystems are everywhere, right? It's a term you hear very, very often. And yeah, we look a little bit uh, into yeah, different regions of the world and uh, yeah, the entrepreneurial ecosystems there. So, background. So, the history of entrepreneurial ecosystems. And this is, this is quite interesting. So, um, First of all, a very, very general and basic understanding. Whenever we hear the term entrepreneurial ecosystem, it is about understanding that it's about interdependent actors and also factors that somehow work together in an environment. And um, basically, it is about yeah, managing or also influencing these different actors and factors in a way to achieve some productive entrepreneurship, entrepreneurial activity. That's very, very important basic understanding. And interestingly, and I, I start with this, as I said, um, I like to do research and 
this is why I want to look a little bit back because this is very, very interesting. This concept of entrepreneurial ecosystems emerged in our entrepreneurship uh, research community basically in the 1980s, 1990s, so most likely the time before most of you were born. And until then, research in entrepreneurship was always focused on specific companies looking, hey, why is that company uh, not growing? Why are companies struggling when they are young? What are entrepreneurs doing? This is what entrepreneurship research was about. But in the 1980s, 1990s, that view changed and it became more of a yeah, community perspective in research. Having this understanding that individual entrepreneurs people that do entrepreneurial activities cannot basically manage or command all the resources, institutions, markets, and business functions that determine also the success of entrepreneurial activity. So you can be maybe the best entrepreneurial-minded person in the world, have maybe a fantastic idea, build a new venture, but it doesn't work. And it's maybe not your fault, it's maybe not that you lack something, some capabilities, but it's the environment. The environment you are maybe physically located in, you are working in, you are acting in. And this is important to understand that especially entrepreneurial success until then was looked very, very narrowly on the, on the individual basis and then said, okay, there is so many more factors that really influence the success that need to be considered and therefore this idea of ecosystems with different actors and factors came up. And research started then and looked into ecosystems all around the world. And there is many, many, many examples. So I brought just some here. Um, for example, there were um, some, some very few empirical studies in the beginning of looking um, uh, into uh, um, what do we have here? Waterloo, Calgary, Canada. So it emerged a lot in the, uh, in the North American scene, looking into specific regions and saying, hey, why do we have a region here where, for example, many um, uh, new companies come up in a chemical sector, for example? Why do we have in this region of the world so many manufacturing companies coming up and being very, very successful? Why do we have so many tech companies in specific areas coming up and not in others. So why is that the case? What's the root cause for this and, and where does it come from? Um, and these empirical studies then showed how value was created, not only on the company level, but at the entire ecosystem. And system, I mean the word system, um, already implies that sometimes there can be very, very complex systems, right? And entrepreneurial ecosystems are also very, very complex. And therefore, it is so important, as I said in the beginning, that we maybe narrow down and break it down to some specific aspects, specific factors and actors that you can look at to, to understand yeah, the ways of value creation, but also the ways of yeah, how interaction and in the end, this entrepreneurial success is created. And um, yeah, there were many regions looked at, uh, and it's really about looking into context. And this is important, important takeaway for all at the study trip here and for everyone um, online also to understand ecosystems. You try to understand the context. So it's not like understanding a tiny little piece of it, but understanding the broader picture, the context of entrepreneurial activity. And therefore, understanding a context is not something that you can do yeah, very, very narrow-minded, just saying, oh, I'm, I'm just interested in, uh, in, for example, how the labor market works. This is maybe nice to understand, but in entrepreneurial ecosystems, you really need to understand the bigger picture. And this is also the I would say the, um, yeah, the mindset that we are having here for our study trip in Wroclaw, 
not looking only at the theory and looking only at, uh, at uh, specific industry or something, but really getting impressions from different perspectives. This is why we have company visit and different entrepreneurs talking to us, also doing a, a city tour to understand the context. So this mindset is very, very important. And research in this field really went up um, especially over the last uh, five, seven years, I would say. Um, but interestingly, um, much of the research is done on the very, very developed and, I would say, mainstream entrepreneurial ecosystems. So everyone wants to find out how does Silicon Valley work? How does the uh, uh, very, very big entrepreneurial ecosystems everyone knows work? So there is a lot of, lot of empirical work. And people are also saying this field of research is very um, are theoretical. So meaning there is a lack of clear theory uh, to really understand ecosystems. And this is what we will also see. People talk about ecosystems and many, many, many different factors and many different actors involved. But there is not this really common theory where you can say, okay, this is basically how entrepreneurial ecosystems work because it's such a complex and also um, yeah, living construct um, that you need to understand. And these eight pillars, which we will talk about a little bit later, this is one way of trying to set up a yeah, kind of theory or a theoretic lens, at least a framework on this complex uh, topic to narrow it down and um, yeah, have some, some ways of, uh, uh, of looking into this. So research in this field going up very much, but lacking the smaller ecosystems, lacking also the emerging ecosystems. And this is also very important, so I would say maybe a second takeaway after this um, yeah, context thing that we said, you need to understand the context. The second thing is entrepreneurial ecosystems are everywhere. But they are completely different. And especially the emerging markets and smaller ones, these are the ones that are yeah, less researched, less understood. And yes, we are here also in an ecosystem which is not a Silicon Valley, right? Rostov is not Silicon Valley, but it's a very, very vivid entrepreneurial ecosystem. And one can learn a lot when, 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 when being here and understanding it. And this is exactly um, yeah, what we, so to say, contribute also to the academic discussion by, by going here and trying to understand a kind of smaller but upcoming ecosystem, which we will see in our analysis a little bit later. So taking the, taking the term, basically, uh, entrepreneurial ecosystems, right? So we said, okay, it is about understanding the context and it is about uh, really, yeah, the factors and actors in a specific region. But let's, let's look at the two terms, right? Entrepreneurial and ecosystem. And so I asked the people here in the classroom, so what does entrepreneurship mean for you? So you are from the entrepreneurial business school number one. So what's your definition of, of entrepreneurship? So who gives it a try? Who gives it a try? Yes. Spirit to create something new. Okay, cool. So who else? Nantija is a practicing entrepreneur. What is entrepreneurship for you? Do something innovative, being an innovator, like you said, like creating something new, right? So I like very much that you are talking about creating something, right? What else? Yes, Alas. Taking decisions in a field of uncertainty? Yes, very good. It's also one of my core pillars of strategy decision, um, uh, definition when you remember my strategy lecture, right? Saying, hey, it's a, taking a decision under uncertainty, right? Very good, because if you just have an idea and if you don't take a decision, right, you don't realize it, right? Yes. Yeah, mindset to change something. Right, very good. And you see already, oh, Michael, something. Okay. Yeah, changing something, making something new, being innovative. You see, once again, when, uh, when you think back what I, what I tell in my strategy class, right, very, very multifaceted 
a construct, so to say, many aspects related to this. And it's the same with entrepreneurship, but I very, very often, and I get the question also very, very often, this is why I like to ask you as well, they say, hey Dominic, you're a professor of a strategic entrepreneurship, what is entrepreneurship for you? And, and I always say, it's basically about two things. Very, very simple. So the first one is recognizing opportunities. So being alert, being open, seeing what is going on, understanding the environment, understanding maybe some, some deficits. So finding opportunities. And the second part, and very, very crucial part is then rolling up the sleeves and seizing this opportunity, right? It's always these two aspects, understanding or finding opportunities, and secondly, doing something about it and seizing the opportunity. And that's an entrepreneurial mindset. And this implies something very, very important as well. Whenever you hear entrepreneurship, many people just think, okay, it is about building a startup, right? Many people say, oh, entrepreneurship equals creating a startup and I want to be a cool, fancy entrepreneur. That's one way, but for me, entrepreneurship is something on a way higher level. And this is what I want to give you on the way, because it's very, very important um, when, uh, when we put it into the context of entrepreneurial ecosystems. Entrepreneurship is about understanding and yeah, finding opportunities and then seizing them independently if you create a new venture, if you work in, an, um, uh, in a corporate, if you are a consultant or whatsoever, this mindset of seeing opportunities and then seizing them is something very, very important. And also in the context of entrepreneurial ecosystems, because entrepreneurial ecosystems do not equal just the collection of startups. It's way more. And that's very, very important. And, and very, very often, very often you see, oh, entrepreneurial, that means uh, the entrepreneurial ecosystem. This is about this 15 startups in this specific uh, domain, for example, that are, uh, that are located there. No, it is way broader and um, yeah, uh, should be understand or understood more holistically. So remember this opportunity, recognition, and then seizing opportunities as one way to describe entrepreneurship. There's no right or wrong. But it's definitely wrong to just equal um, entrepreneurship and startups. Very, very important. So, first component, entrepreneurial, we have. Second one is ecosystems. And ecosystems is, um, is actually a term um, that basically comes uh, from biology. So, you might have heard it in your seventh grade uh, biology uh, class uh, back at high school. Um, and basically, it's a biotic community, it's a physical environment, and all the interactions. So very, very easily said, it's an environment and all the interactions, everything that happens in there. And that implies already that it's not just about the startups. All the interactions that happen there. And looking into this concept of ecosystems, um, it is stated that it's about a co-evolution and mutualistic interdependence. And that adds, once again, this complexity aspect into, into what we are looking at, into entrepreneurial ecosystem, right? Meaning, if you change on one thing in an ecosystem that can have an impact, or maybe a tremendous impact, on many, many other factors or actors that you might not maybe be seeing in the beginning, um, but that in the end, yeah, have a, a tremendous result. Um, and in the biology, uh, biological ecology, it's also about this co-evolutionary rise and fall. Maybe something in an ecosystem happens that in the first place maybe means, oh, one, uh, one company dies, one university leaves, one I don't know, one supplier uh, uh, changes location, that can have then a tremendous impact, impact on rise and fall of many, many other actors. And that is this, yeah, this ecosystem component is very, very, very important to, um, uh, to have in mind, um, uh, or this, this 
biological background basically there is when you when you look it up into the internet in the internet you find often uh, metaphors comparing it also to ecosystems in in the forest for example right if some species dies it can have a tremendous impact on other species as well where there is no direct dependent and independent variable relationship in the first glance but through the complex system there was a relationship and yeah it can have a tremendous impact if something rises or falls within an ecosystem so that being said we have the entrepreneurial ecosystem so the term of entrepreneurship not being only related to startups and second we have this this ecosystem perspective, which means really all the interdependent relationships um, that you have uh, in actors and factors. And this being said, then, as I said, there's little theory about it, but of course many scientists, also practitioners, put a lot of thought in, okay, we understand that there is these relationships, but what does it actually mean? How can we break it down? So how can we make it somehow yeah, tangible uh, and manageable as well? Um, and yeah, of course, there is this relationship, this multi uh, uh, or mutualistic uh, interdependencies knowledge, yeah, maybe coming from a scientific community. Financial resources coming from venture capitalists, banks, business angels. Human resources coming out of universities regulatory approval from governments, etc., or parts and distributions you, you, know, you, you get from different suppliers. So this is basically breaking it more and more down and trying to yeah, understand the relationships that are there and understanding that entrepreneurs are not only dependent on these elements, but vice versa, it's the same thing, right? These elements also depend on entrepreneurs in the system. Because as we said, it's mutualistic, right? If you change one thing in, a, in an ecosystem, it might have an impact on many, many other factors as well. So all actors in an ecosystem somehow um, uh, perform critical roles, crucial roles. And it is therefore so important to understand what are all these aspects one, one should look at. Um, and there were then some concepts of entrepreneurial ecosystems that emerged, looking into um, uh, specific uh, uh, yeah, parts of it. Um, Van de Fen in 1993 said, okay, we need to basically understand the infrastructure and looking into um, uh, entrepreneurial ecosystems is basically about understanding infrastructures. So, um, about public resources, etc. I don't want to go too much into detail. And more and more researchers over the last, I would say, yeah, 30, almost 40 years went out and yeah, tried to narrow it down and break it down into specific components. So, for example, um, there is one a very, very famous framework saying, okay, it is about policy, finance, culture, support, human capital and markets you see already that, that, that there are aspects in there that you might not maybe have on a first glance um, or uh, something that comes up uh, first to your mind when thinking about entrepreneurial ecosystems. Thinking also about the culture, about some social factors in a physical environment that also has a maybe, maybe very, very significant implication uh, on what is happening uh, in, uh, in the respective ecosystem. And taking all this, there's lots of, lots of, lots of sorts uh, being made of what is actually an entrepreneurial ecosystem. And I said in the beginning of the lecture, I want to give you something on the way. I want to give you something out of this, yeah, I would say maybe fragmented field of research, fragmented uh, field of frameworks and theories um, that is easy to understand and easy to apply um, when thinking about uh, entrepreneurial ecosystems. And I brought basically the eight pillars of entrepreneurial ecosystems that basically condense all the factors um, that, um, yeah, that have been researched on that, um, uh, that people say, this is relevant for understanding entrepreneurial ecosystems. It's eight factors. It's about markets. It's about regulation and infrastructure. It's about funding and finance. It is about a support system. It is about human capital. It is about culture. It is about education. And it is about major universities. So 
different factors, some maybe a little bit uh, interlinked, but this is basically covering with with these eight uh, pillars, so to say, covering a holistic view on an ecosystem. And if you think about these eight pillars, uh, each of them in detail, um, and put it, so to say, together, you get a very, very, very good view uh, on ecosystems. So let's go a little bit into this uh, and understand each of the uh, dimensions a little bit uh, better. The first one. It is about accessible markets. So what does it mean? Why accessible? So it means, okay, what is actually kind of the market potential there? Is it uh, um, the size and growth of a specific market region, uh, being it in total for the economy or for a specific industry? It is about uh, access to information also. So um, understanding also a market is also very important in how transparent is a market. Can you understand how big and how uh, fast the market develops. Very, very important to understand and how to access this. If there is maybe a potential that you say, okay, people might be willing to spend money on something, but can you actually access this? Is there the right infrastructure, so to say, for, for payment, for example? So if you, if you go out with an, uh, a very easy example, if you go out with an online business model in a region of the world where you think, hey, they exactly need it, but people are not used to credit card payment or to online payment, you might have a problem, right? So, so understanding this, okay, how accessible is the market um, with uh, specific um, things for making businesses work uh, is very, very important. And also, of course, consumer behavior. How is consumer behavior in markets uh, structured? Are consumers uh, likely to, to um, yeah, buy something or is there different preferences? The second one is about regulatory. Then the regulatory framework and the infrastructure. Ease of starting a business. So, who has started a business in Germany already? Yes, and was it easy? What did you uh, do, uh, uh, U, uh, UG, or what did you start, or GmbH? GmbH. Okay, it's, people say it got easier, right? But there is, of course, countries where it's even way easier, right? And you needed to go to a notary, you needed to fill a lot of, lot of paperwork, right? German bureaucracy does nothing without uh, uh, honest paper, right? Um, and there is, of course, countries in the European Union where it's way easier to found a business, for example, right? Some people going to Estonia, for example, where you can register a business online, do all the tax things online, do all the accountancy online, and, and uh, have it way easier. But there's also countries where it's very, very difficult to form a legal entity and start a business. So the, the ease of starting a business, very, very important to consider tax structures, there might be tax incentives. And think back what we said about um, the definition of, of entrepreneurial ecosystems. We said, okay, it's also about commanding these different factors and maybe managing or steering them. And of course, public institutions, governments are interested in creating entrepreneurial ecosystems for the wealth of an economy. And there might be some tax incentives for specific industries or branches that shall be pushed. So things like this, looking into this tax system, how complicated is it? Is it generally business-friendly uh, legislation or policies? There are parts in the world where it's not so business-friendly. Um, access to basic in infrastructure, access to high-speed internet, to, to, yeah, infrastructure in that sense, maybe also access to transport. And here, very important, maybe one disclaimer to this, to this framework and the categories that we um, put below this. These are just examples, so they are not necessarily collectively exhaustive, these points, right? It is important to understand the general category, but of course, you don't need to tick the box for each of these points and think, okay, what is the access to, uh, to transportation if that is maybe not relevant um, uh, for, for, for your ecosystem. So it's just about understanding the areas where to look in, into when, yeah, when trying to understand an ecosystem. So I like very much, so uh, did someone go with a tram already here in Wroclaw? No, you don't need to. Are ah, you? 
Okay, so how did you buy your ticket? With your credit card, right? Yeah, very digital, right? So you have seen maybe the Trumps, right? They, in the first, first glance here in Wroclaw, um, they don't look very digital, right? It's a very classical uh, Trump, right? But if you go in there, uh, and that's the big difference to, to, to Leipzig, for example, where the Trump looks maybe fancy, shiny from the outside, but if you, if you go into a Trump here, or if you go into a Trump in, in, in Leipzig, it's a completely different digital experience. Has someone tried to, to, um, uh, to go on a, on a tram ride in, in Leipzig, uh, entering the tram without a ticket and uh, trying to buy a ticket with your credit card? No, what is it? It says um, coins only and uh, please uh, uh, put in the right uh, exact amount because uh, the machine doesn't give change. So, right, and uh, I mean, this is what you see in, in Leipzig and here you have just this uh, NFC scan thing where you can put your uh, mobile phone on or your uh, credit card and you don't even get a printed ticket, right? It's just recorded. And if you get checked, you just hold on your, your credit card and they see that you have made a transaction. So this is something quite interesting and this is maybe something when we're looking into uh, ecosystems, hey, wow, there is already in the field of transportation, something very, very interesting, something very, very advanced maybe, and this again says a lot about consumer preferences and consumer behavior, that people like paying cashless, contactless, right? So that's the small little things to observe and to understand uh, in ecosystems. Let's go on, third one, funding and finance. Very, very important aspect don't want to talk too much about it uh, because uh, Alexander Lahmann will, will talk about this in the next session. But of course, without money it doesn't work, right? And it's really about understanding a financing and funding scene, so to say, and the opportunities that are there, the access to capital uh, in an ecosystem analysis, right? The venture capitalists, private equity, banks, business angels, whatsoever very, very important to look at the funding side. And um, as it is so important, um, as I said, uh, Alex will, will give a lecture on this uh, uh, later. Fourth one, support system. So ex except for financial support, there is also yeah, non-financial support or assistance that is important to look at. Are there maybe some mentors or advisors? Is there kind of this community of like-minded people that give support to each other? Um, is there professional service that you can use to, to, to build new businesses? Um, is there maybe some incubators or accelerators that in a structured way support business creation? And yeah, network of entrepreneurial peers. And it's also a uh, very, very important aspect and also taking this uh, for everyone in the room um, as we are uh, yeah, going for a company visit tonight and also having uh, an entrepreneur um, uh, from Wroclaw uh, talking tomorrow here. Um, this is exactly what, what they will tell you. Hey, how is the scene, right? How is the entrepreneurial scene in Wroclaw? But if you try to analyze an ecosystem, you need to understand this exactly. Because when you're, for example, building a new company, creating a new business unit whatsoever, building something new, seizing an opportunity, right? Rolling up the sleeves, there will be problems and you need to be challenged, you need to have a good network of, of people you can talk to um, that support and promote your idea. And this is so important to understand also in the analysis part. Fifth one. We talked already about finance, but it's also about human capital, right? So is there enough people? Is there access to talent, right? Maybe also looking into, oh, how, how is the strength of unions or, or labor market regulations? So is it easy to hire someone and maybe then also easy to get rid of this person again? Um, whatsoever, so but looking at the human perspective also, and this is, why I like so much what, what Aneta was, was telling us in the beginning about this, hey, what's up? 
120,000 students, right? So if you compare this to Leipzig, as the, 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 the cities are actually quite a very, very similar size. Leipzig has around 40,000 students and um, Wroclaw uh, three times that, right? And you see that this, this has a tremendous implication on, on, on everything that happens here in the city, right? And this is, this is of course, the uh, human perspective and the access to talent. Do people want to go here? If you need young people for your business, is this an attractive area where, where people want to live, right? Very important to consider. Six, cultural uh, support. And there it goes also a little bit also on maybe sometimes regional or country level and looking at different cultural aspects, habits, customs, right? Is there a, maybe a supportive cultural um, setting for, uh, for creating uh, businesses and being an entrepreneur, right? So in Germany, we always get the question, oh, if you tell your grandma maybe, oh, I was at HHL and now I understood how to build businesses and uh, I want to become an entrepreneur now, so what would one or the other grandma maybe say? So how is that when you, when you uh, found your business? So what did your grandma say or your parents? Wasn't happy about it, right? It's a, the German mentality is, hey, you, you, you create your own business, don't you get a job at Siemens? Or, I don't know, at Mercedes-Benz or at BMW? Are you not good enough to get into a good company? You need to build your own company? Right? This is not everywhere, it's stereotyping, right? But it is very much of a, um, yeah, of a risk averse, not so much risk loving culture. And and you see, if you, if you compare countries, of course, there is, of course, different perceptions of it, right? In the US, for example, hey, being an entrepreneur is the cool thing, right? This is, hey, wow, that's a cool guy from dishwasher to millionaire whatsoever. So, so this mindset and this, this cultural way of how to assess or how to uh, basically uh, value entrepreneurial activity is extremely different. And this not only maybe on, 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 on country level, it can also be um, a smaller on regional level. Um, and it is also so much influenced by the history of the, of the country, by the system, for example, and what maybe the government uh, yeah, tries to do. I mean, in Germany, of course, the government is trying to push entrepreneurship more, right? So. Uh, our incubator, uh, Digital Space, is also um, financed by uh, the Federal Ministry of the Economic Affairs, right? They say, okay, we need more entrepreneurs, so we, we uh, basically finance incubators like this to, to promote entrepreneurship and also to make a cultural shift so they don't say, okay, build 100 startups per year. No, they say, okay, make an impact on talking to people and make an yeah, make entrepreneurship and entrepreneurial activity in the form of like cultural sense more positively connotated, a more positively um, uh, yeah, connected uh, term. And so all these cultural aspects need to be taken into account. And as I said, it's also about understanding the history, right? And understanding also the history when we are here in, in Wroclaw, also understanding the history of Poland, of the region, right? Very, very important. And we will see also uh, in our um, uh, study, uh, in our uh, city tour uh, tomorrow, yeah, how this historical development also shapes entrepreneurial ecosystems today, right? Why is uh, HHL located in, in Leipzig? Why? Why, yes? No. <laughs> yeah, it was so back in the so the, the as you all know the history of HHL is very 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 long was almost 125 years and in some parts of its history of course it was uh, was part of the university, but why was it initially founded? Why was why was HHL founded in 1898, 98, so 124 years ago in Leipzig? Yes.
right, not only of Saxony, but for the entire region, um, it was a trading and merchant city, right? There was a lot of, lot of um, uh, merchants, entrepreneurs in these days, so to say, and they thought, hey, what can we do to better educate our young people and to basically yeah, uh, professionalize um, uh, our way of doing business? Because back in 1989, uh, 1899, 1898, oh, 124 years ago, so very, very complicated, um, there was upcoming um, globalization, right? Trade that was back in the days, yeah, more regional, became more international, more complex, and therefore there was a new uh, yeah, form of education needed. And this is why Leipzig was the birthplace of, of, of these Handelshochschulen, of these um, yeah, kind of business schools, right? And then afterwards, many, many others uh, uh, came up as well. So once again, so why am I telling this? This is just a very, very nice example of how history and some aspects in a specific region um, contribute to some outcomes that still last 124 years later, right? So, that's, and that's important to understand, and this is why we also include this, yeah, historical view on Wroclaw in our trip as well, because this is very, very important to understand what the entrepreneurial ecosystem is today. So, the last two ones, education and training. Of course, it is looking into the school system also. When we think about HR and, uh, and the human resources, the human capital, it's also important to understand, okay, what is coming up next? How is the school system? Is there maybe a specific focus on, on, uh, on specific topics? So this is what we will definitely see here. Uh, I can tell you this already. Um, and um, of course, universities, right? I mean, the HHL example, and uh, the same as HHL is for Leipzig, uh, is uh, w WSH here for Wroclaw, creating entrepreneurs, right? And then fueling also this, this scientific community of it, and not, not only uh, producing entrepreneurs and putting them, uh, so to say, out to build companies, but also to yeah, foster the academic dialogue um, as we are doing in our strategic entrepreneurship research group, really going very, very deep into entrepreneurship uh, academic discussions and understanding the relationships, etc., to then transfer this into practice again. So major universities and also the entire education system of a, of a country, of a region, very, very, very important um, to understand. That being said, that's the eight pillars of entrepreneurial ecosystems I want to give you on the way. So let's quickly um, uh, repeat again. It's about the accessible markets and the regulatory framework and infrastructure. So how can we access it? And how is basically all the um, uh, legislative uh, part and how, to, uh, how easy is it to, to build something? Third one, funding and finance. No money, no business, right? Support system is there kind of a non-financial support system as well, incubators, accelerators, whatsoever. Fifth, human capital and workforce. Do you get the people into a specific region to work there? Cultural support, how is entrepreneurial activity perceived? Maybe very, very positively or less positively. Education and training. What is the entire education system? What is maybe a focus in terms of skills and capabilities in the system? And are there major universities, as catalysts said here, that yeah, fuel uh, entrepreneurial ecosystem? So this is the, uh, what I want you to take away. Um, and of course, for everyone in the room, the slides are uploaded to Canvas so that you, you have them available. Um, to understand whenever we talk about entrepreneurial ecosystems, it's not about just startups or some community of startups, but it can be broken down or narrowed down to these eight dimensions, which need to be understood to understand the entire uh, system. And let's come to the final point and discuss a little bit. So in the beginning, we said, okay, entrepreneurial ecosystems is, um, is something that is 
not just Silicon Valley, right? Entrepreneurial ecosystems are everywhere, right? And we are here in a very, very vibrant, upcoming, growing entrepreneurial ecosystem that makes it so interesting also, which is it's a very, very special ecosystem. Uh, but there are, of course, entrepreneurial ecosystems all around the world, right? And I brought some pictures here, and I would like to discuss with you. When you hear the term entrepreneurial ecosystem, what kind of city, what kind of area, what kind of region, or even country do you think about? Yes. Silicon Valley, do you find it here on the... Yeah, so... The iconic Apple campus is uh, uh, second row, third from the left, right? Silicon Valley, right? So let's talk about Silicon Valley. So that's the first ecosystem everyone thinks of when you drop the term. Why is that such a, or what, what is Silicon Valley about? It's all about technology, right? And why is it called Silicon Valley? Yeah, right, so microprocessors, right? So tech, and today, every tech company, of course, the big ones have an address in Silicon Valley. So why is Silicon Valley such, an, such a big ecosystem? Yes. Yeah. Right. So this is why it remains such a big thing, right? It, and, and it is something that, that keeps the ecosystem alive, right? And it remains a big one, correct? Okay, but yes? Yeah, so, right, right. So it's different uh, backgrounds, different, it's very, very international also for, for, uh, for, for American standards. Uh, and it's also, um, as you said, it's bright people coming and doing something. But why? Why did it happen there? Why did it happen south of San Francisco? I mean, there's not this one reason. But thinking in, think in our eight pillars again. Eight pillars, why did it happen? Why did it happen? Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah, meanwhile, now if you would go through, right, if you would, would, would do the ecosystem analysis for, um, for Silicon Valley, you would basically, in all these areas, you would find something great. But why? Where does it come from? I mean, it could have happened everywhere in the world, right? But why did it happen there? Yes. Yes. Right, so military is one aspect. There was a lot of, lot of R&D to tech military things, yes. And where is R&D uh, usually located? Yes. Stanford University, yeah. So if you, if you look into the history of basically of, um, of Silicon Valley, you very, very often find the argument that one of the main drivers of why this tech ecosystem emerged so, so well and is such a lively thing right now is actually Stanford University. And this is why it's so important to understand this, this eight dimension major universities as catalysts because all the aspects that you were mentioning, right? Accumulating smart people, bringing young people together, thinking what we said about what is entrepreneurship about, innovative ideas, right? A lot of comes from universities, right? And Stanford University was one of the core drivers in this region to basically enable the emergence of, uh, of, this, uh, of this fantastic uh, ecosystem today. I mean, there's many factors that come together. You cannot just say, oh, this was the only one, but really a, a major one. And let's, let's talk about some other ecosystems in the world. And you see ecosystems emerge for different reasons. So, Silicon Valley, one of the main reasons, Stanford University. Which other ecosystem you have in mind or you maybe recognize? Yes. Singapore, yes. Why that? Right. And the very international orientation. Right. 
regulatory framework. So second pillar of our, our thing, very, very favoring uh, the ecosystem in Singapore. It's actually not on, a, I think it's not on the, no, Singapore is not on here, no. But yeah, very nice example. Yes, I think there was a hint, yes. Israel, ah yeah, so we have it. I think it's not so easy to see, but somewhere is, ah here. Second, uh, second uh, line, the last one, it's Tel Aviv. So why Israel? Military, right? Right, so Israel is such a tech hub, mainly driven through military expenses, right? And military education and focus on, on R&D uh, for, uh, for military uh, technology. And this is interesting. So what happened in the last couple of years, why is, or maybe 10 years, 10, 15 years, why is Israel so interesting for, for um, yeah, for, for the automotive industry? Right. right. So many of these aspects, also this, I mean, we all know that cars become smarter and smarter and have more sensors and lots of lots of research on sensor technology that you need for, for autonomous driving, for assisted driving, comes from military R&D and many, many of the, the companies uh, going basically out of military and doing it for just commercial use are resided in Tel Aviv or in Israel in that field that originate from, from this military aspect. So it's, that's quite interesting, yes. And, and here you see the difference, right? So Silicon Valley, you can break it down very much to R&D, Stanford, Israel, you can say, hey, this comes more of from a, from a high investment into military technology, which was also related to R&D, and then basically drove this entrepreneurial ecosystem. So completely different root cause, basically, yes. India, India yes, we have, I think, Yes, second one is Bangalore, yes. So, what's India? What makes India special? Right. Yes. Right. 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 And there's maybe, so I totally agree to all of them. And there's one very, very important point as well that topic wise, right? IT, right? Focus on engineering, right? Software engineers, right? And this combination with, with the sheer size, right? In the own domestic market. Okay, the domestic market uh, in terms of value, of course, and GDP still needs to grow because you still have a, a, a high share of, um, uh, of, 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 of low income population. Um, but yeah, definitely, it's this focus also, and there it goes back to uh, education system, right? Focusing very much on, on engineering early on that leads to, yeah, a big, big, big ecosystem of engineers and software engineers, right? And it's maybe not only Bangalore, it's many cities, you know, I spend a lot of time in, uh, in my chair in Hyderabad, so we call it also Cyberabad. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's, 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 it's a crazy growing city with all the big tech names coming up and considering themselves the Silicon Valley of India, and you, you have many of these cities, right? Huge cities, yes. So, what else? Yes. Berlin, yeah. Yes. Right. And Berlin, I mean, why has Berlin grown through to, to, to an entrepreneurial hub in Germany? I mean, okay, Germany generally a big economy in, in European Union, but why did it center so much to Berlin? So. Right, correct. 
Correct. And also, so, so uh, that the city was basically very, very big and had lots of room for, for entrepreneurs, so to say, to try something out on a very, very cheap uh, or comparably cheap uh, uh, price that definitely drove uh, the development of the ecosystem. And, and also important, looking into the culture again, right? So what's the history of the city being divided and then being kind of a magnate for, for artists and uh, these designers, right, coming into the city, contributing to this culture of, yeah, being free, trying something out, being creative, being innovative, right? And compared to Munich, for example, which is another fantastic entrepreneurial ecosystem, of course, what is Munich? Is driven by, by, by some culture, art, uh, cheap price thing as Berlin? Yeah, Tum. Right? Very much so, engineering focus, etc. right? So, so very, very different. And there, just as an example, so you see also within countries, totally different yeah, reasons or root causes why entrepreneurial ecosystems uh, emerge. And uh, this is very, very important to understand. And I think it's, yeah, it's also um, yeah, quite interesting to see. That being said, When you look into entrepreneurial ecosystems around the world, so the big ones basically are really the ones from the, yeah, really uh, established economies that dominate uh, our, so to say, our perception of entrepreneurial ecosystems. But I want you just to understand that it's not just about these big entrepreneurial ecosystems, it is about entrepreneurial ecosystems basically everywhere and understanding them through this lens of these eight dimensions. And here are some ecosystems, I mean, very, very big ones, Silicon Valley, Boston, and other ones. But we are here in Wroclaw in a very, very, as I said already, young, vivid, growing entrepreneurial ecosystem. And it's so interesting to see why it is so yeah, so to say, so uh, upcoming, growing, and getting bigger and bigger uh, every time we come here. Um, so that's very, very important to have in mind. And it's also to have in mind that it's not only about the, um, yeah, so to say, the, uh, uh, the main um, uh, industrial regions of the world, also in, yeah, regions and parts of the world um, uh, which are maybe uh, still in a de developing stage. We had the example of India here. Very, very, very massive entrepreneurial ecosystems came up and are growing day by day. Uh, and quite interesting, I like this graphic very much. I don't want to go too much into detail, but basically um, um, uh, the Asia Pacific region has already outscored, so to say, um, and the uh, European uh, um, top ecosystems, so to say, in terms of share of the top ecosystems, and but still North America with with the U.S. still being uh, um, uh, number one, so to say, or leading with most uh, top entrepreneurial ecosystems, but definitely a growth in 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 yeah other regions of the world, and we have seen on the slide before um, this. Um, uh, yeah, some pictures also of Asia, Southeast Asia, very, very interesting markets. And um, yeah, you could also continue to talk about this um, for a very, very long time. But that being said, um, I would like to thank you, everyone, for this, yeah, um, I hope not too boring uh, introduction into a little bit of the background of what entrepreneurial ecosystems is about, what entrepreneurial ecosystems are. And um, yeah, if you take something out of this lecture, um, the least thing is, yeah, that entrepreneurship is about opportunity recognition, but also about seizing these opportunities, rolling up the sleeve and doing something, very, very important combination. And when you want to understand entrepreneurial ecosystem, really this interdependent relationships of different and many different factors and actors, you can use this yeah, eight pillar framework um, to understand the core drivers of it. And having maybe seen in the examples here that we had, that different factors 
can be a root cause for the growth of, of, uh, of entrepreneurial ecosystems, as we have seen with Silicon Valley, with Singapore, with Berlin, uh, or with uh, Tel Aviv, for example. Um, yeah, so thank you very much uh, for uh, the attention. And uh, yeah, also everyone online, thanks for uh, joining. Um, and yeah, have a great day. Thank you very much.